The RAF's Typhoon, the backbone of combat air defence for the UK, 2022 saw it fly more operational hours than ever before, but the aircraft entered service in 2003 and is now halfway through its service life. So how do you ensure it remains relevant in the rapidly evolving landscape of modern warfare? All military aircraft constantly evolve. When they, normally they follow an S-curve so in terms of their capability. Of, uh, what that means is when they first come into service, uh, uh, they tend to be quite out. immature, uh, obviously, uh, and they improve as uh, new capabilities uh, are added. And that tends, tends to be quite gradual early in the aircraft's the life, but then there's an acceleration of new capabilities as they're added and you get onto a steeper part of that S-curve and that's when it really gets interesting and more exciting for a platform. We're really on the steep part of the S-curve for Typhoon now and we have been for a number of years. So some really exciting capabilities that have been added, just been added and will continue to be added over the next few years. Typhoon covers a full spectrum of air operations, including air policing, peace support and high-intensity conflict. In recent years, it's been upgraded with storm shadow, brimstone and meteor missiles. And it's soon to get a new radar, which will allow it to simultaneously detect, identify and track multiple targets in the air and on the ground. But what about a little further into the future? What capabilities could we see? BAE is working on an autonomous system concept that could act as a fast jet force multiplier. Speaking from experience, you definitely don't want to load the pilot up too much with too many things to do. So the whole idea of an autonomous platform it, it, it is it understands the task that it needs to do within set boundaries and then it can go about that task with minimal but uh, appropriate human in the loop decisions. So, for example, you could give it a search task to do and report back when it had found something. But unlike remote piloted aircraft of today, you don't have to be hands-on all the time. So the idea is that it could uh, do what it needed to do, but without continuous interference or oversight from a pilot. An autonomous system working alongside the likes of the Typhoon is another way of enhancing capabilities. They could carry payloads for, for instance, uh, um, reconnaissance packages, uh, a suite of cameras or other sensors. We could load them up with um, electronic attack uh, payloads so to help with the suppression of enemy air defences to allow other assets to get close to their targets. Uh, or in time, and we don't see this as a first step, but in time you could start to load them up with air to surface or air to air weapons that would still be controlled by a human in the loop uh, but would be fired from from a remote platform and uh, you know it, we're not necessarily with the reds landing behind we're not necessarily looking at uh, close formation um, always tied like a sort of loyal wingman we, we see these operating just as another effects node uh, almost certainly beyond visual line of sight from, from perhaps the controlling platform BAE is investing its own money in this project in the belief there is a place for this technology in the RAF fleet of the future. Claire Sadler, Forces News, RAF Fairford. Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.